While the Tenno largely fight a solitary war, there are those who would extend their hand in companionship. Among them are the several syndicates that choose to ally themselves to our cause. But while they may claim to support the Tenno, it is important to remember that they do so only for their own gain. Those who would oppose their ideologies will find themselves the subject of ruthless attack, but due to the powerful weapons and augments they can supply the Tenno, their attacks are excused for now. Each of the syndicates holds strong beliefs that guide their actions as well as dictate who they favor among the Tenno. The first syndicate, New Loka, preaches a belief of a pure and whole earth for which humanity can return. Given what Ballas has said of Margulis and her yearning to earth, it can be assumed that earth has been in turmoil for some time, dating all the way back to the Orokan Empire. Though no longer infested, the Orokan's attempts to aggressively terraform the planet has left it hostile and wild, deadly even to the Grenier Empire. With nowhere to go, humanity scattered itself amongst the barren planets in the system and soon found themselves oppressed by the rapidly spreading Grenier Empire. New Loka speaks of a world cleansed of Grenier influence, a place that humanity can at last call home. Because of New Loka's belief in human purity, they find themselves at opposition with the Steel Meridian, as they do not consider Grenier to be of true humanity, a stigma that likely dates back to the Orokin Empire. However, it has been hinted that they are not wholly opposed to a diverse world. In the Rathum event, they speak of trials that Grenier can undertake to join the ranks of the new Loka, although these trials may be impossible, as they seem to carry the likely outcome of death. Additionally, New Loka is opposed to Cephalon Suda, likely because they wish to purge Orokin technology from the Earth and allow it to return to its natural state, losing precious data in the process that Suda desires. Though not much is known about New Loka's activities, they seem to have established temples of worship across the system, likely in remote locations on Earth itself. From here they can attempt to gain a foothold over the frontier and rally against the Grenier, no doubt better suited to the natural environment of Earth than the Grenier. The next syndicate, the Perrin Sequence, is formed from the offshoots of X Corpus guilds. These brilliant merchants renounce their faith after witnessing the troubling trend that the Corpus were heading towards. While the Corpus subsist almost entirely on funding war efforts, the Perrin Sequence dream of a world where free market rules and war is nothing but a thing of the past. However, it is important not to confuse this belief with pacifism. Indeed, the Perrin Sequence is more than willing to resort to violent measures if it is the best option. The Perrin Sequence are in direct opposition with the Steel Meridian. While the Steel Meridian sees the Corpus as those who profit off the suffering of others, the Perrin Sequence sees the Grenier as a warmongering force that has led the Corpus astray. While neither group carries the beliefs of their old allies, the negative opinions of each race has led them to foster an intense hatred that cannot be alleviated by words alone. The Perrin Sequence also find themselves opposed to the Arbiters of Hexus. This is likely because the Arbiters do not wish to see the Tenno reduced to lowly merchants brokering peace, casting aside their honorable histories. Though it may seem odd, the Perrin Sequence and New Loka are allied. This is most likely due to their shared goal of a system-wide peace, and while they have different reasons and methods for this goal, the goal is still fundamentally the same. The Perrin Sequence occupy most of their time by monitoring statistics and probabilities throughout the system. Through this dedicated study, they can predict profitable times to strike and weaken their enemies through highly deliberate attacks. It can be assumed that like most Corpus, they still maintain most of their forces on stealth ships along the edges of the system or throughout the dark sectors. The third syndicate is the Red Veil. Much like New Loka, the Red Veil is the result of humanity's last vestiges facing the brink of extinction. But unlike New Loka, they do not see Earth as their birthright. They see the system as their prize. Through this ideal, they cleanse the system through fire and chaos, excising the corruption of the system through highly violent measures. But they also understand the importance of stealth and have adopted a code of assassins as opposed to warriors. The Red Veil have no qualms with cruelty if it means they achieve their goals. Additionally, their mantra, no cost too great, no blood too precious, is another indication of their zealous fury. While this mantra could be interpreted in many ways, it would not be wise to believe that the Red Veil are saviors, but rather that they are cleansers. It is also because of this belief that they are allied with the Steel Meridian. While the Steel Meridian take the role of the shield, the Red Veil takes the role of the sword, cutting down the enemies who would harm those the Steel Meridian hope to protect. However, their violent and destructive nature puts them at odds with Cephalon Suda, who values preservation. While the Red Veil may have no qualms with destroying Orokin Reliquary if it means crippling the enemy, Suda is very much opposed to the thought. 
Additionally, the Arbiters of Hexus are opposed to the Red Veil's use of the Tenno, seeing their wanton bloodshed as repetition of the past, and they abhor the idea of Tenno being squandered as mere weapons once again. The Red Veil work in the shadows, following the orders of their leader, Cantus. They work to set the enemy ablaze. It is likely that they have many operatives among the few remaining enslaved settlements, slowly working to rally resistances and weaken the occupying Grenier or Corpus military forces. The fourth syndicate is the Steel Meridian. Comprised of ex Grenier who were born with a genetic defect that allowed them to disobey the Queens, the Steel Meridian works to protect those their brothers and sisters would destroy. It is unknown exactly why the Steel Meridian chose to protect the humans of the system, but it can be assumed that it was born from an intense desire to defy their old masters. It could also be their wish to eventually orchestrate peace between the Grenier by instilling trust with the humans, though such an outcome could be well outside the time span of their already shortened lives. While their actions are noble, they are very limited in scope, and could be argued to serve as a selfish need for actualization, as opposed to some imagined greater good. The Steel Meridian worked to undermine the entrenched beliefs of their race, and weaken the Grenier's hold of the system by liberating human colonies. Without human slaves, the Grenier are forced to burn through their genetic templates faster, and expend resources at a greater rate. Additionally, their goal of complete dominance is weakened by the seeds of dissent the Steel Meridians sow within both the humans and the Grenier they encounter. The fifth syndicate is Cephalon Suda, a Cephalon of immense strength. Suda is driven by an unquenchable thirst to scour the system for knowledge. More so than any other, she values the old knowledge of the Orokin and holds it in high regard. While to some, Suda's hatred of destruction may seem benign, but her coldness regarding the individual lives within the system can seem hypocritical at worst, and puzzling at best. However, what Suda's exact goals are through gathering such a wealth of information is unknown, and could be the difference between freedom and destruction in the system. Cephalon Suda is allied with the Arbiters of Hexus, likely due to the knowledge they offer of the old ways of the Tenno. Warrior scholars who worship the ways of old, they are most certainly one of the few sources of the past the Orokin left behind. Cephalon Suda occupies her time by analyzing and collating data that her agents deliver to her. If this data must be obtained through death, as with the survivors of Operation Rathum, or through acts of kindness is inconsequential. The singularity she strives for by consuming this data is obfuscated, and may not come to pass for millennia. The final syndicate is the Arbiters of Hexus. While many Tenno may be content to murder, pillage, and profit off the embers of the war they began, the Arbiters see them as a source of infinite potential. They believe that the Tenno of old were shackled by the purpose the Emperor has assigned them, and that their divine status is only barely recognized. By adopting a dogmatic culture somewhat reminiscent of old Orokin hierarchy, they seek to shape a new set of rules that the Tenno can live by that does not limit their power. Through trial, focus, and study, they hope that the Tenno can reshape their culture and become a beacon of hope in the system, not just the legend from bygone days. The Arbiters spend most of their time studying and focusing on the Tenno ways. While they themselves are not Tenno, they strive to embody the ideals the Tenno culture instilled. What this hidden potential they seek to unlock within the Tenno is, is uncertain. But above all else, they seek to lead the Tenno on a path towards what they believe is enlightenment, regardless of what the system as a whole must endure. But as with many things in the Warframe universe, these are largely open to interpretation. But until the time comes when we have all the facts, this is what we know.